Gemini, welcome to the realm of astrology. This is your monthly horoscope overview for the month of October 2021. But before we begin, I would request you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post a video. And I also do daily video horoscopes and weekly video horoscopes on my YouTube channel that you can watch. All right, so this reading is for a Gemini rising and Gemini sun, and I would recommend watching your rising sign and then your sun sign so then so let's talk about what's happening in the month of october gemini so the first important event happens on 6th of october and that is the new moon in the sign of libra it's happening at 13 degrees of libra that puts it in your fifth house okay and what is a new moon? A new moon is essentially a new beginning. We see things on a new moon that we will work on for the next lunar month, for the next 28, 30 days. And for you, this new beginning, this process of seeding something is connected to your fifth house of romance, love, children, creativity, all these things. Hobbies, fun, pleasure, all fifth house things. So there's a new beginning in this area for you. It could be that you start a new hobby. That you work on for the next month it could be that you start a new fun practice it could be that you change the way you approach a romantic relationship anything connected to the first uh, fifth house and that's october 6th and on the same day gemini we have pluto going direct in your eighth house now pluto went retrograde in april and in re during retrograde we receive the karma for the work we put in while the planet was direct and with pluto the work is about transformation healing catharsis a lot of psychological work internal work so till since april about april 27th or so it was about receiving the rewards for the work we put in for connected to pluto in the areas that i mentioned and now pluto is direct again which means the creation of karma connected to transforming healing ending things a psychology begins again and october is a month where we will see a lot of planets come out of retrograde which means october is a month where a lot of forward movement will begin again since april one by one all the planets started to go retrograde pluto saturn neptune uranus chiron jupiter which meant we are reviewing the past, which meant we are asked to review the past from a different perspective, which also meant um, rewards, karma for the work we put in while the planet was direct. So it was a lot of review. It was a lot of the past coming back up, rewards for the work we've put in. But now forward movement will begin slowly again. The active creation of karma will start again. We will start to do new things again. And... Soon after this, on September, oh, sorry, not September, October 7th, we have Venus here changing signs, okay? Now, Venus has been in your sixth house for the past few, few days, 20, 25 days or so. And Venus is a benefic. It gives gifts and blessings and it also makes us more receptive to the area that it's in. And that's been your sixth house up until October 7th, which is, which is the house of health, job, diet routine lifestyle habits so maybe you became more receptive to these areas you said okay you know i need to pay more attention to my diet or blessings and gifts maybe venus blessed you in some way connected to your job these are just examples so anything connected to the sixth house that's where you became more receptive to or received blessings and gifts because venus was there now on October 7th, Venus is going to enter your 7th house and make you more receptive to and give you gifts and blessings connected to your marriage, legal relationships and business partnerships. So it could be that you become more receptive to your spouse. It could be that you become more receptive to your business partners. Or it could be that you there's a legal issue going on and Venus comes in and gives you a blessing connected to that. So something like that. And on October 10th, Gemini, we have Saturn going direct. Now, Saturn is the planet of hard work and decisions and discipline, and it has been retrograde for a few months. Now, it's going direct on October 10th in your ninth house. And Saturn has been in your ninth house since December of 2020 for good. It retrograded back and forth before that. Let's not go there. 
but it will be in your ninth house till 2023 and wherever saturn is we are asked to work hard we're asked to put matters of that house in order and for you gemini it is connected to this hard work higher education foreign travel knowledge wisdom all these things publishing if you're into that that's what Saturn is asking you to work on. And Saturn has been retrograde for months, which means the active work in that area of your life kind of slowed down. You received the rewards for the work you put in while Saturn was direct, but now the forward movement of putting in the work, of being disciplined about these things starts again. And if you want to know the long-term energies in your chart, the outer planets, things like Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, Jupiter, uh, the nodes, Chiron, all these planets and what they mean for your rising sign Gemini, you can watch my long-term video, which is already on YouTube, and that covers these energies till 2023. So that's that. And moving on, on October 12th, we have the first quarter square of the moon. Now, this is a point where the sun and the moon make their first 90-degree angle. And this week, starting on October 12th, we begin to face challenges and overcome them connected to what the new beginning that you seeded on October 6th connected to your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, children, pleasure, hobbies, fun. So this week, you'll be overcoming challenges connected to that. Maybe you started a new hobby. For example, these are just examples. But this week, you're realizing, okay, you know, I don't have time for this. I need to make time for this hobby. So you make adjustments, you overcome that challenge of not finding time and you incorporate that in your life. So th simple things like that. And then moving on to October 18th, we have Jupiter going direct, right? Now Jupiter is in your ninth house and Jupiter is a benefic, which means it gives gifts and blessings. And when Jupiter is retrograde, the gifts, blessings and even lessons ease off. We're asked to review things we've reviewed, uh, we've gone through before, we're asked to Work on things we worked on before retrogrades, like I said, are a time of receiving karma. But now Jupiter goes direct again on October 18th, which means we start to create karma connected to Jupiter again. We may receive gifts. We may receive lessons and blessings connected to what Gemini in your ninth house. Higher education, wisdom, knowledge, foreign travel, all these things. Maybe blessings, maybe some lessons. The forward movement begins again. And on the same day, we have Mercury going direct. Now, Mercury, I should have mentioned, as we enter October, Mercury is retrograde. Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Libra. Now, Mercury is the planet of our mind and thinking. And during Mercury retrogrades, communication slows down. Gadgets can malfunction. And it's not the best time to start sign contracts or such start new things. So entering October, Mercury is retrograde. But now on October 18th, it comes out of retrograde. And Mercury retrograded in your fifth house, which meant it asked you to mentally review and reprocess things connected to creativity, children, hobbies, fun, pleasure. And now it's coming, di moving direct again, which means the forward movement will begin, which means the communication that might have slowed down will start again. And on October 20th, Gemini, we have the full moon in the sign of Aries. That's happening at 27 degrees, so about here, which is your 11th and 5th house axis. And what is a full moon? A full moon is a point of clarity. Full moon is the brightest night of the month. We can see things clearly on a full moon. And Gemini, what are we seeing clearly? For you, it's the new beginning that happened on October 6th. Whatever you see it then, you're able to see that more clearly. Could be a hobby you started, could be a fun thing you started, could be something connected to how you approach romance, love relationships, or it could be something connected to your children or maybe a creative activity you started. Now you're able to understand that beginning better. The second thing is that in April of 2021, we all started a new life in a way. And now with this full moon in Aries, that new life is very clear. It's very clear. What was that that started in April? Now you're able to understand that better. So these are the two things about this full moon. And for you, I should have mentioned, this full moon will highlight on one hand your creativity, children, love, romance, pleasure, hobbies, all these things. And on the other hand, the 11th house, the groups that you belong to, the organizations that you're a part of, your hopes, goals and dreams, 
science, tech, the future, all these things will be highlighted with this full moon because it's happening in your 5th and 11th house axis. And then moving on to October 23rd, we have the sun entering the sign of Scorpio. Sorry, that was a bad drawing. Okay, it enters the sign of Scorpio. And the sun spends about 30 days. It spends 30 days in a sign. And for you, up until October 23rd, the sun's going to be in your fifth house, which means it is going to illuminate and make the focus of your life the fifth house. Romance, love, creativity, children, hobbies, fun, pleasure. And then on October 23rd, for the next 30 days, it is going to illuminate, highlight, bring to focus your sixth house of health, job, lifestyle, diet, routine, and exercise. And then on October 28th, Gemini, we have the last quarter square of the moon. Now the last quarter square of the moon is a phase when the sun and the moon make their last 90 degree angle before the next new moon in the month of November. And this whole week, starting October 28th up until November 4th, is about releasing and letting go. Now this is a subconscious release. It's a subtle release and it is connected to the new beginning you had on October 6th in your fifth house of children love romance creativity hobbies fun pleasure this week you're assessing gemini what about that beginning can come with me to the next lunar month what about that beginning do i need to let go of so that's the vibe and all this is subtle and subconscious and on october 30th we have mars changing signs mars here is going to leave the sign of libra and enter the sign of scorpio and which means it's going to leave your fifth house and enter your sixth house now mars is an energizer it enters a particular sign which means a particular house almost after two years so up until october 30th gemini mars has been re-energizing and reinvigorating your house of love romance creativity children hobbies fun pleasure and what does that mean it means that maybe you've been working very hard you've been working very hard for two years very very hard and in that, you forgot about your hobbies, you forgot about having fun, you forgot about taking life lightly. Fifth house. But now Mars came in and says, hey, let's start that hobby again. Let's re-energize this part of your life. So it could be something like that. Or it could be that you've been working so hard, Gemini, that Mars comes in and says, what about love and romance, Gemini? Doesn't that have some space in your life? So, you know, it got you thinking about that. Simple things like that. Now, these are just examples. It could be anything connected to the fifth house for you. And now Mars is going to enter your sixth house on October 30th. And it's going to do the same thing to your sixth house. The house of health, job, diet, routine, exercise, lifestyle. So maybe, again, similar example. You've been working very hard, Gemini. And now Mars comes into your sixth house and says, what about your diet and exercise? What about that? It's time to get that back on track. Let's, let's start, let's start working on that. Wherever Mars is, we direct our energy. Wherever Mars is, that's where the action happens. Because Mars is our drive, it's action, right? So it's, from October 30th, it's going to be in your sixth house, asking you to really re-energize, reinvigorate, work towards, put your energy into sixth house, health, job, diet, routine, exercise. And that's the end of the month. So October is a month, Gemini, where, where a lot of forward movement will begin again. A lot of planets are going direct. So forward movement, the active creation of karma starts for a few months, especially since April, one by one. All the outer planets went retrograde, which meant slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, complete slow down. And now slowly, one by one, the planets are going direct. Forward movement beginning again, slowly, slowly, slowly creation of karma starting again and the moons in the month of october are intense and we will talk about that in the moon videos but i just want to mention that these full moon the new moon and the full moon both are very intense and october is a month that is an intense month there's a lot going on and especially with the planets going direct we will begin to see that forward movement again and now i will pick a card for you gemini and then we'll close out the reading Okay, get better. Let's go with the top card. It says adversity. I accept that challenges are the best way to learn. And I think the lesson for you this month, Gemini, is that 
if you've gone through challenges, if you've been working very hard, maybe that's maybe recognizing that you learned something from it may ease that uh, feeling because sometimes we feel like I'm working so hard. Why did I have to go through this? But if we look at what we learn, maybe that becomes easier. That's the lesson. I don't think this card is saying that the month of October will be challenging. No, I think this card is saying more like recognize that adversity is how we learn. And maybe if you've been through adversity, it's what's made you stronger and it's what's made you grow. I will pick another card for you, Gemini. Let's go with the top. Never-ending story. So maybe, Gemini, this month you need to look at something that's a never-ending story, a pattern that keeps repeating itself. Maybe you want to dig a little bit deeper, think about what this never-ending story is. It could be a relationship, it could be a habit, it could be a thinking process. Thinking negative could be a never-ending story, you know? Yeah. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in one of my other videos. You can watch always watch my dailies, weeklies and moon videos to know what the month has in store. And I hope you have a great month, Gemini. Bye.